I want to move on to one of the other big stories. This is uh, very relevant to you, given your background. Um, the Leinster Council are apparently pouring cold water on Westmeath's hopes of hosting Dublin in next year's championship. And I'm delighted to say we've got John Heslin, uh, the second Westmeath man on the show this morning. Uh, you guys are taking over. John, good morning to you. Good morning, lads. How, How are you, John? What's the crack? He's been up uh, since no. half four milking cows, I'd say. <laughs> I wait. Yeah. Not this morning. Not this morning. Come here, when the draw gets made against Dublin and you guys come out first, what are you thinking? I, I, I didn't think you were actually going to bring me on to talk about that today. I thought you were talking. You were going to talk about the flan, Mullingar. Ah. I thought that's what we were promoting. <laughs> that's the second hour, John. We're on, we're on 9 to yeah. 10. When is the flan? Oh, God. I, I, I thought you were kind of, you know, I'm getting myself and Bresley on because of our musical exploits, how good we are. You know, we're both very talented musicians that I was going to be talking about the flan. He's not lying. John and John knows the stuff. You think about the flads, the flads like people like and um we're me and John are obviously very proud Mullingar, Westmead men, and um, um, we don't get a lot, you see. It's kind of sometimes Westmead's forgotten about or the Midlands is forgotten about. And that's right, even yesterday in the budget, look we after getting a, we're getting <laughs> it's Pascal Dunn who actually mentioned uh, the Midlands, which was lovely. And um, so and that's not a chip on our shoulder, by the way. So having the flat <laughs> in Mullingar, the place is lost. We've even dug up the whole town right. and rebuilt it <laughs> and put all these new paths in. When and is the flat? 2020. All right, okay, so yeah, loads of time for us. Yeah. And John, what, what are you doing in the fly? What's, uh, what's your party piece? I can't, I can't announce that yet. I'm doing a, there's a PR stunt around that and a big marketing campaign to, <laughs> to really announce what I'm doing at the flat. So I don't Michael want to reveal all yet because we still are only in 2019, <laughs> which probably will lead me on to my first point of uh, the fixture with Dublin. It's a bit mad, isn't it, really, that we're talking about the 2020 championship. It's probably a little bit unfair on the dubs. They're not getting to enjoy their uh, their five in a row. We're already talking about the championship in 2020. <laughs> I'd say they don't... Poor Dubs. They're, they're <laughs> unconcerned about where this fixture ends up being fixed, and that's the whole point. I think that Dublin would be absolutely delighted to go to Mullingar, because... Why the hell wouldn't they? It's no, it's no odds to them where they end up playing. We built the street. The streets look great again because of the flat. that will be welcomed in. People love It's only 50 minutes from Lucan. It's got lovely, you know... I think the dubs would be. I'm going to ask the dubs to. Refer, like this is the thing about it is like the the, the buzz that would create from Mullingar to play the dubs first round of the championship and it would be it would be amazing. And I think that's the thing about it is it's like it the, the difference it would make and also like you know it's it, to have them in your back back you know back room is is obviously going to give you a little bit more of a chance of taking on the might of them. John, yeah, you so know that, a little yeah, bit better. I think I'm going to go one step further and even say that I'd say that lads, the Dublin lads, don't, didn't even know the draw was made. Judge <laughs> by their Instagram, them lads are travelling the world at the moment and having a great time. And, and rightly so, more power to them. But I'd say they don't even know the draw was made. Uh, so, you guys obviously want a home game, right? I was actually, well, of course, yeah, we'll take a home game. I played them down in the field on the farm, if that's if that makes it, it's going to beat them, you know. But, um... Look, I was looking back at the last quarterfinals. I don't think quarterfinals are home draws anyway. Mm. Is that am I correct in saying that? That's a good question. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, so the so details last are. Year, I think Carlo and Kildare. The draw was produced. Carlo and Mead was in Port Leash. Was Mead and Leash was in Tullamore, as was Carlo and Kildare. Sorry, I, get, Kildare. sorry I, I have it here. Patty and was speaking with uh, Willow Callan last night. The draw was to produce four fixtures for the quarterfinals. <laughs> It wasn't made with first team out being home. It's not a case of Westmead losing a home game. Quarterfinals are at neutral venues unless there's already a home and away agreement in place between the counties involved. Now, I mean, it feels to me like everybody has a, an away and away agreement with the Dubs because you always play them in Croke Park. And certainly you have done yeah. for the last two decades. So why yeah. would you have bothered so, to... So the agreement, so, so if himself and John start texting some of the players to see if they're cool with it, that, is that okay. enough for the Leinster Council? So we said, listen, they're up for it, so can we play it that way? Well, Jerry Egan has been out and he said that he wants to um, have the game in Mullingar for next season. So I, I think that actually there is a chance here for everybody just to draw breath. The, the Leinster Council are saying that it's a health and safety issue, that they'll have a bigger capacity in Tullamore and be able to deal with a bigger crowd. And yes, we all know that if the crowd is the crowd, then that's the number of tickets that you sell and some people won't be happy with it. But actually, yeah, yeah. that's how life is. Like, that's why some uh, home grounds are smaller than others. But so be it, that's fine. Like, there's no reason for the Westmead County Board and the Dublin County Board to have sat down 25 years ago and said, let's do home and away. Because no. it, like, it's, not, it's not part of that culture. Take sport out of it for a, a second, which you probably shouldn't. Even for commerce of a town like Mullingar, that, you know, every, everything like that would be really, be really helpful. You're, you're stuffing a stadium, there's a buzz in the town. 
you've got the fla that year, all that kind of that that does help. Like it really does help, and it can help maybe businesses who who go like we're getting twelve, thirteen, fourteen thousand people into a stadium or whatever it is we get in, and there's a buzz around the town. That's really good for even for one day, two days. So I think yeah, I think at the end of the day, I mean the health and safety thing is something they use a lot, uh, and I I get it to a point, but you know. I, I don't know, it's a, it's a very easy get-out-of-jail-free card sometimes for them. Yeah, John, there was a Kerry game in 2012, I think, that um, was a, a big game for Westmeath. Yeah, we nearly knocked Kerry out of the championship that day, and then Darren O'Sullivan decided to come off the bench and put the ball in the back of the net. I remember um, that. God, it was yeah, I, never, I never really got to thank Darren in person for that, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was a great game. Like, you know, we had Kerry, you know, one of the all-time great teams, played the play game. They were down in, in Cusack Park, and it was a great atmosphere around. And as I said, we, we actually nearly beat them that day. Um, but you know, I echo everything that said there, and especially you know, Jerry Egan said that he he wants them in Mullingar. Of course, we want to be playing the game in Mullingar. But including sport into what Brezzy just mentioned, like the buzz that it creates for the younger people. Like mm. we all know that the Leinster Championship has been one-sided. Uh, with me, got the two Leinster finals. Perhaps in a, in a different era, could have won one of those finals. And obviously that creates. Look, I was I was a young kid when Westmead won the Leinster Championship in tw- 2004, and that that you know encouraged me to continue the game. Bringing the likes of Dublin and the stars that they have, and you know, arguably some of them are the, gr- the greatest players ever to play the game. Like the buzz that that would create for the people, the young kids of Mullingar and Westmead, you know, you can't even put a value on that. Like, and it's disappointing that it's not even being considered to be in Mullingar. So. And when you look, we were speaking about John the the idea that a Gaelic and hurling and and rugby and sorry, at that level, young people want influence. Like uh, right now, the big influence is, is rugby is such a huge hole in the country, and young people all around Mullingar. There's, I mean, there's hundreds of young people going out playing rugby in Mullingar, a club that was struggling for a while, and that kind of injection in, in how rugby took off. And it's the same with GAA. If you if you can influence young people, who are kind of you know what? Actually, that was some buzz. I rem- I remember. I remember these. I remember being brought to see Mullingar play in the Towns Cup final, and Joe Schmidt was centre for Mullingar. And I remember just the buzz at the Towns Cup final. And I remember saying to my dad, "I want to play rugby." That has massive influence on young people. So th- I'm not overselling this, but like if you get into the town, you bring as, as John said, the best players, whoever played the game, the, one that, like, the best team that ever played into the town, and have grab that buzz. It will, it will make a difference. And some people will go, "Oh, why should Tullamore not have that?" But actually, it's not the same because it's not awfully playing them. It's not awfully playing them. It's best Mead against Dublin, and it's it's important. And, and, and to be fair to to that's a great stadium are in in Tullamore. They get a lot of great games. Um, Cusick Park doesn't, and it's important that we, we, we kind of we just stand up for it. I mean, whatever the Lens Council decision is final, I hope not. But um, well, it, I mean, the, the point that the Lens Council make is that there's no home and away arrangement between the counties at the moment. Um, why not set one up, John? The, like the opportunity now is to try and do a deal with the Dublin County Board and say, look, let's do a home and away. Why, why shouldn't we? Yeah, exactly. You know, I, I spoke to John Costello outside Crow Park uh, before the All Ireland final. Now, he left before the conversation got any bit tricky, mind you, but I'm sure he wouldn't mind a phone call uh, from the Westmead County Board to sit down and, and have a chat about it. But uh, another thing about it as well, if, if, if there has been a mention of health and safety, etc., etc., sure, the Leinster Council and the GEA have uh, plenty of time between now and the game to, uh, to renovate any part of Cusick Park that they want to do. Yeah. So, look, all, all joking aside, the game should be in Mullingar for the spectacle, for the competition, for... The GAA to take advantage of the fact that this fixture has popped out as opposed to having it at a neutral venue. We built new pavements, for God's sake, for the flower. Will you bring it to Mullingar? We'll wave the toll bridge on the N4 if that's what they're worried about. <laughs> like, can the toll bridge wave it so we can get all the dubs down for the game? One day, one day only. <laughs> right, John, we let you go. Good luck okay, this weekend. Th- take care, John. I hope, you, I hope you. you respect the fact we didn't even ask you to preview the weekend. Yeah, yeah, I do respect that very much. Thank you. Keep <laughs> practicing that song for the flag, John. <laughs> yeah, all right, lads. Thanks very much. Good luck, John.